Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, it is time for my monthly palette rankings where I rank all of the palettes that I tried in the month of November. So if you want to see what came out on top and what was not on top, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you are new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market. November, there was quite a few palettes that came out. Honestly, half of them are Viseart because Viseart just threw them all out on us at once, which I'm very, very happy about. So we have 13 palettes to talk about for this month. I feel like maybe December might be a little bit slower. It seems that the releases have slowed down, which is good. I've been enjoying just coming up with more creative videos doing not review videos, you know? So I don't know if you've noticed in the last week, I've just been doing some different videos. Anyways, let's start off with number 13. So unfortunately, what comes in last place is gonna be the Vizzy Art Framboise palette. Now this is one of four palettes that came in the Pettit's for quads. So this one is kind of the raspberry one. That is what Framboise stands for. And this one's just a little bit too soft for me. And not only that, I just have a lot of colors. So for me, this doesn't bring a lot of value to my collection. I don't think it's a bad quad, but it is a bit underwhelming. And just looking at all of the palettes that came out this month and how much I tried, it just obviously was the least favorite. I don't think it's a bad palette and I don't want to discourage you from picking it up if you are interested in the color story really really adorable but you don't get much depth with this palette and it's just kind of meh compared to some other things that have come out moving on to number 12 it is the Wayne Goss the pearl moonstone palette now I have very very mixed feelings about this palette overall I love this blue glittery shade right here I think it is incredible the last couple of looks I've done every time it includes this blue it is just fantastic unfortunately Unfortunately, what doesn't work for me are these grays. They're patchy on my eye. I think this palette is really sensitive to what you use as a base. So if I just use my concealer as an eye base, I find these grays to be extremely patchy. If I use a regular eye primer and set my eyes, it's not as bad of an experience. But for a luxury price, I just, I don't really like that. I feel like with less pricey eyeshadows. They don't get patchy like these two shadows. It's not a bad palette. I just think it needs a little bit of work with these gray shades. So that's why I'm a little bit disappointed. I want Wayne to come out with an all celestial shade palette. He's so good at this formula. If he created a palette with all of these, I would die. Right. Moving on to number 11, we have another Vizzy Art quad. This is the Chocolat, and I actually really like this one. It's just that it's warmer, and I like warm colors. I still wear warm colors, but there's two other ones that I love a lot more. This quad, again, really great. It has nicer depth in it than the Frambois that I just mentioned, so I do really like it. I think it's really pretty. It's just not as pretty as the other ones that have come out, so I like it a lot. I think you guys will like it as well. It's really good, but again, they're just little quads, you know, so they aren't the most exciting palettes. Moving on to number 10, we have the e.l.f. Retro Paradise eyeshadow palette. Very pleasantly surprised by this palette. I haven't had the best experience with e.l.f.'s formula in general. I don't think they have a bad formula by any means. It's a little hit and miss. Some formulas are bad, but some formulas are quite good for the price. I don't think they have the best drugstore formula either, but some palettes are a little bit more solid than others. This one, quite impressed by. The brighter shades here, they do require a lot of building up, a lot of going back, packing on the color again, so it's not perfect. But for the most part, for the price, I really like it. I really love the combination of colors. I think a few of these colors in here are quite unique. I definitely think this is worth the money. Is it the best palette in the world? No, but I've thoroughly enjoyed my experience with this. I've loved the looks that I've come up with. And I would recommend this if you're looking for a decent palette from the drugstore. I would steer you more in the direction of BH Cosmetics. I think they have a better formula than e.l.f., but it's a pretty color story. I saw it at Target. I just grabbed it, put it in my cart, and I am not mad at it. I don't regret it. Moving on to number nine, I have the BK Beauty eyeshadow palette. This is the True Beauty eyeshadow palette. This 
is Lisa J's makeup brand and this is the first eyeshadow palette to come out from the brand. So I currently am wearing this palette on my eyes except for I have a Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Pearline all over my lid to give me that extra glazam because I mean this is a very very soft palette and it's weird because when I'm at home I really like going really really glam. It's not like when I'm working when I go for more natural makeup. So right now in this point in my life I'm grabbing for bright colors because I'm at home I want to play I want to be a little bit more creative so I actually haven't been grabbing for this as much but I feel like when life gets back to normal hopefully sooner than later this will be a palette that I reach for a lot it's a nice formula I think the shadows are a bit too powdery for my preferences as far as the shimmers go because they kind of get all over my face but it definitely is easy to work with the colors blend really beautifully they build on each other well also I do wish this had a chocolate brown I do feel like this is missing a chocolate brown but overall it's a really solid everyday palette don't think it's for everybody but if you like soft eyeshadows this is really nice moving on to number eight we have the Vizzy Art Lila's palette. So this little guy, it's a nice silver quad. I love this color story. It's just missing depth. So I see myself reaching for this a lot more, but I definitely would need to grab from the Wayne Goss to get the dark gray color because it's very, very light on my eyes. I wish they would have replaced one of these two colors, probably this one with a deep, deep charcoal color just to really make it a more complete quad. I love the formula in here. It's very creamy, really gorgeous. Love the grays. I find it to be a very unique color color story. It's just missing a little something, you know? I do feel like I need to dig into elsewhere to get this. Moving on to number seven, we have the Tom Ford First Frost Eyeshadow Quad. I love this. I think it is stunning. I will be very honest. I've only used this twice, so I do want to use this more. I feel like the more I use it, probably the higher it would rank. But again, I'm not really into these soft looks right now. I like to go a little bit more glam now. So this isn't currently in my regular routine the type of colors that I go for it's so 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 pretty though I will say it's probably one of my more favorite Tom Ford palettes I don't think it's my favorite but I just love this color story and I did a whole like trying luxury makeup and this was the quad I used and I really really enjoyed it moving on to number six this is my favorite of the Vizzy Art quads this is Praline and these are my kind of neutrals these are the tones that I I really enjoy a little bit warm but also a little bit cooler just really kind of in the middle I find the quality of this to be extremely creamy as well if you are going to pick up one of these quads I would recommend this one I think it's the most gorgeous and I mean it's not unique but I feel like the industry lacks this kind of tone as far as neutrals because it's my favorite. So I do highly, highly recommend this one. I love it. It's gorgeous and it's so tiny. It's perfect to keep in your purse, you know? Number five, again, I told you, Vizzy Art really pushed them out. We have the Violet Itanzu palette. First of all, obsessed with the packaging. That's how I knew I already was gonna love this one. And it is a gorgeous purple palette. Now, I will say I probably don't like this as much as the liaison which this is an extension of still gorgeous obsessed with the look that I create I like the options that you have to get a more neutral toned down purpley kind of look or something that has that purple mauve undertone so you have some options here you can go bolder or you can go more natural I do think this isn't as creamy or pigmented as the liaison either like the quality is still really really good but my heart is still like like it, it belongs to Lee's and it really, really does. But this is still a gorgeous palette. I love it and I can't wait to continue using it. Moving on. So number four, we have the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes Palette. Now, I don't think I gave this a glowing review because I feel like every shade in here can be duped within the Huda line. So if you own any Huda shadow palettes, you, you, you probably already own all the colors in here. But I can't take away from the fact that it is a darn good palette, you know? The colors are really gorgeous. They're very, very pigmented. I think if you have a medium or deep complexion, you're gonna like this. I like the colors. I like the array. I'm not an original palette but every look that I make I really like. I like the tones in here. It's a good palette. Number three, we have the Nabla side-by-side -side nude palette. So Nabla launched a neutral colored collection and I'm 
I'm obsessed with this neutral palette. I know we all have so many neutrals in our collection already, but there's something about this where I feel like they hit a lot of different tones of neutrals, and Nabla is a new brand that I ended up discovering this year, and I'm sold. I love it. They have great quality products, they are made in Italy, and their color stories are really well thought out. You get more unique color stories, the packaging is really cute. Honestly, what's not to like? I really feel like they are going to grow as a brand in the United States, so I'm excited to see where they go. But this palette, so bomb. I'm a neutral lover at heart. Even though I'm here playing with glam looks, colorful looks, at heart, a neutral glam is where I belong, and I feel like I can get that with this palette. Quality is really great. Just overall, a solid palette. If you like neutrals, do yourself a favor. Number two, I mean, duh, we have the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette. Okay, okay. <laughs> Anyways. So here is what the color story looks like and surprisingly my favorite part of this palette is actually the mattes. The duo chromes that she has here I don't find to be that impressive. They're a little bit more soft of a formula which there's a place for a softer duo chrome formula I do think but I feel like if I'm gonna wear a duo chrome like I'm aware a duo chrome. Yeah, mm, uh. This middle row, which is supposed to be the most exciting, is the least exciting. What I love here are the mattes. I think this is such a unique color story as far as the mattes go. There's a lot of shades in here that I feel like cannot be duped within my own collection as well. So overall, I think it's a solid palette quality-wise. It's really nice, but I feel like it's a unique palette. I don't have a lot of palettes like this. I love all the looks I've come up with so far. I like how it's laid out to a purple look because, you know, I'm where the purples are at. You have a green look and then you have... This is a little bit of a mishmash, but again, I enjoy this palette a lot. I don't think it's for everybody though. Like I can't tell you, oh, you need to have this. You definitely don't. But if this looks like it fills a void in your collection, which I feel like it does in mine, maybe consider getting it. Numero uno. And I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for me to talk about this palette again. I got asked why it wasn't featured in last month. It's because I didn't try it in, I think it was October. So I did try it in November. I've had it for pretty much a month now. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Fire Rose Quad. I did just talk about this in one of my newer videos. It is amazing. It's one of the best palettes she's come out with. The formula, she like really, really, really stepped it up. The most impressive part for me is the Super Pop formula. It's a new formula from her. Stunning, glittery, delicious. You need this. Now, I always say I don't know if Charlotte Tilbury is going to be worth it for everybody just because there's a little bit of refinement in her formula that you may or may not be able to see or tell that it's there. And if you can't tell that it's there, then it's not going to be worth it to you. This is definitely a formula that I feel like justifies the price because the value of Charlotte Tilbury luxury quads are not very good. The quality in here is so good that it's definitely worth it. Now, I know it says discontinued on the site. I don't know what that's all about. I did hear that the quad was available at the Los Angeles store, so you could call and have them send it to you. So I don't know if that's still happening, but that's a little tip one of you guys gave me. I hope it comes back. She'll be dumb not to bring this back because this is a money maker right here and I know a lot of you guys are dying to pick one up for yourself. I'm going to imagine that this will be restocked. Maybe it'll come back as a bigger collection. I don't know but we need this back. We do. Alrighty you guys. So those are all of the palettes that I tried in the month of November. We're a few days into December and I haven't tried many new palettes so we'll see how the rest of the month plays out but I've really been enjoying playing with these palettes. I do need to play with the Vizzy Arts more because those came out at the end of the month. I do want to do a little bit more of experimentation with those, but I'm feeling pretty solid about where I put everything. All right, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.